Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Safety in the Older Adult, Episode 1, Fire Safety. After viewing this episode, participants will be able to identify common fire hazards in the older adult's residence. Also, participants will be made aware of community resources available to aid in fire prevention. So some of the common fire hazards associated with geriatric residences, um, really the, the first point we've got to talk about is the, the fact that over 1,100 Americans over the age of 65 die in a fire every year. Now that number goes up exponentially for every decade in life. So uh, compared to the rest of the United States population, uh, between the ages of 65 and 74 are twice as likely to die in a fire. And from age 75 to 84 are four times as likely to die in a fire as compared to the normal population or the average population. That's an astounding number for, for emergency services to consider. Now emergency medical services and all emergency responders have to understand that geriatric citizens are a special needs populations in and of themselves. The number of medications, the normal changes with age that go on make them prone to accidents and make them unfortunately unable to self-evacuate or self-rescue in times of crisis. Some common hazards associated with geriatric residents and geriatrics or senior living communities include the human factor. As I said, changes with age, the natural aging process make people less aware of their surroundings at times. This can be a problem when it comes to uh, being aware of an emergency or a situation in the, in the home or the residence. Again, the inability to self-evacuate, get themselves out of harm's way, puts them at more risk to being exposed to the products of combustion and to thermal or physical injury. There's also hazards that are common in the kitchen, uh, kitchen area or maybe doors that are, are not maintained that will keep uh, furnace areas separate from living areas, that type of a thing, or heating units that are small and portable that are very easily uh, near flammables or near other combustible material. Cooking and smoking are leading causes of injury from fires in the senior population. Those have to be addressed as well. Maintenance, not being able to change smoke alarm batteries, not being able to maintain appliances properly, or the improper use of things like irons and candles could make the geriatric or senior population at more risk for injury or harm. We have to also understand that certain diseases such as uh, Alzheimer's uh, make someone prone to making errors in the kitchen, putting improper objects such as trash or clothing into an oven and then turning that on um, certainly could generate a fire and put them at risk. Changes associated with the aging process predispose older adults to ignite a fire yet, at the same time, reduce the chances of surviving it. Polypharmacy may cause drowsiness or impaired judgment, decreasing the awareness of fire and other hazards. Approximately 40% of older adults are asleep and 20% of older adults are bedridden at the time the fire is ignited. All emergency responders have a role in reducing hazard and risk in the geriatric community. One thing that we can do first off is to recognize that the hazard potential exists. EMS uh, makes it inside the patient's home or the person's home much more often than fire in most municipalities. And recently, I'd say over the last five to ten years, fire departments have taken it upon themselves to uh, do a little bit more with all ages when it comes to smoke detector programs and carbon monoxide, de carbon monoxide detectors even. It is uh, good to be familiar with what your fire jurisdiction or your fire district has available. Um, all of them are different, but uh, most fire departments in this area at least will make a concerted effort to see smoke detectors put up or someone from that area help the smoke detectors go into place. But uh, it's not just smoke detectors. It's a, an awareness of cooking, heating, any type of uh, fire door or heavy door to uh, separate living areas from uh, potential fire hazards. And EMS people are probably going to pick up on that more often than your layperson. I would say that if there is a fire hazard, they should definitely talk with the patient about it, talk with the patient's family, and then also 
alert the receiving facility, whether it's the nurse or the social worker or both um, about different fire hazards and whether or not another agency needs to be contacted about this fire hazard. Emergency responders have to be aware of the resources that are available in their community. Not only be aware of those resources, but understand how to get them into action for the senior community or the special needs populations. There are community resources available to aid in fire prevention of older adults. I would say that first of all, um, contacting the Monroe County Fire Bureau if a family or a patient feels as if um, they need help and that they are at risk. Um, in addition to that, uh, Lifespan or Elder Source can assist and they have different groups that can assist with older adults that smoke. Um, and they can be contacted through calling Lifeline. There are a variety of resources available for fire prevention. Fire departments often offer smoke detectors to the community. If EMS is concerned about a potential fire hazard, they should communicate with the family. Other resources in Monroe County include the Monroe County Fire Bureau, Lifespan at 585-244-8400, and Elder Source at 585-325 we also have to understand that the EMS personnel or the first responding EMS personnel may be the only people to see these patients in their natural environment so to speak. That is to be able to appreciate the social and the environmental issues that could be impacting the patient care and the patient needs. Fire departments don't really eliminate hazards although we, we certainly would like to do that. Um, we reduce the risk of those hazards through certain uh, operations in the fire service. The top issue in uh, the American Fire Service as far as reducing hazard is uh, community education programs. Getting out to the, the public, educating the, the children right on up through the seniors on safety issues, anything from car seat safety to bicycle safety, senior cooking safety, uh, safety in the homes, installing smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms in the homes all make a big difference in reducing morbidity and mortality from fire related injury. EMS has got to take a page from that playbook and be more community active or proactive in getting those programs out. The, the fire department will routinely uh, check smoke alarm batteries, check carbon monoxide alarm operations uh, on the scene and that those types of things as long as well as removing uh, throw rugs, getting, removing other trip and fall hazards and such like that um, can be done by the fire department, can be done by EMS. The difference is when the fire department responds it's patient care first and then as the EMS crew arrives that patient care is turned over which frees up a couple of uh, resources that the personnel from the fire department to check those hazards. EMS can and should do those same things when they're alone on a call. The problem is an EMS crew typically is two people and you may not have those resources available for your, your partner to go out and check the smoke alarms or for you to check the, the carbon monoxide alarms or whatever um, before you leave the scene. My recommendation there would be if you think that there's a home in need or an individual in need to refer that to the fire department immediately and they can follow up. Fire safety tips. Communicate with the local fire department and understand the resources available for fire prevention. EMS frequently enters the homes of patients without the fire department. Be observant for potential hazards. After viewing this episode, participants will be able to identify common fire hazards in the older adults' residence. Also, participants will be made aware of community resources available to aid in fire prevention.